you all may be seated. We are in court today to discuss the possible appeal of Adnan Syed and for the murder of Heyman Lee. Hello, my name is Jack Daniels. I am the lawyer for the state of Maryland, and I believe the original trial in which Adnan Syed was convicted for the murder of Heyman Lee was justified. Your Honor and members of the jury, my name is Ben Dover, and I'm here today to find justice for Adnan Syed in the case of Heyman Lee's murder on the night of January 13, 1999. Thank you, Ben Dover. You may call your first witness to the stand. I call to the stand Mr. Alonzo Sellers. Mr. Sellers, can you tell us what happened on the night of January 13th, 1999? Yeah, man. So, you know, I was driving my car. I was drinking a Budweiser. I was having the time of my life. I was trying to go to school because I work as a maintenance man there. And on the way there, I'm like, I need to take a tinkle. So I stop. So I'm looking around for the nearest park. And I see Lincoln Park, and I'm like, okay, perfect. There's like a wood, you know. I go there. I'm trying to go deep in so no one sees my weenie, you know what I'm saying? I go in, and I'm doing my business, and I see this dead chick. And I'm like, what? Is that a toe? And then I, like, go up to her. I'm trying to wake her up, man. And she's just dead. And I'm just like, what the heck, bro? Like, huh? Did you notice anything on the body? I didn't check, man. I was trying to pull up my pants. There was a dead chick next to me. What was I supposed to do? Thank you, Mr. Sellers. Those are all the questions I have for you today. Thank you. Defense, do you have any questions? No, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Sellers. You may step down. Thank you, man. Prosecution, you may call up your next witness. <laughs> next, I would like to call up Asia McLean to the stand. Mrs. McLean, can you tell us what happened on a night of January 13th, 1999? I mean, it was like any normal day. I mean, you went through it not thinking anything was gonna happen. But what I do remember is seeing Adnan in the library and we had a 15 to 20 minute conversation um, just talking about um, Hay and their breakup. Ms. McLean, did you notice Adnan having any violent or murderous tendencies? He seemed really calm about it. I mean, I was very impressed with how mature he was. Um, all he said was that he wanted Hay to be happy and that she was and that's all that mattered. And why did you not give a testimony at the first trial? I wrote Adnan a letter when he first got convicted for the murder and he uh, said he gave it to his lawyer but nobody ever came back to me to testify so I just figured that they had enough evidence to prosecute him. Thank you, I don't have any further questions for you, Ms. McClain. Mr. Daniels, do you have any questions for the witness? No. Adnan Sayed, please come to the stand. Mr. Sayed, what were you doing on the night of January 13th, 1999? I don't remember. It was just like a normal day. I wouldn't remember if I killed her though. Like I, I didn't do it, I swear. Did you have any ill feelings towards Miss Lee? Not at all. I just I just wanted her to be happy, even after the breakup. I wasn't like jealous or anything. Like I honestly just wanted her to like have fun and you know live her life. I have no more questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Jack Daniels, do you have any more questions for the witness? Yes, I do. Mr. Syed, you are known to have a history of marijuana use, is that correct? I mean, yeah, but it was nothing out of the ordinary. Like, you know, occasionally I'd smoke a few ding-dongs with my friends, but it was nothing, like, crazy. Like, we were fine. It, all the cool kids did it. Marijuana is known to reduce inhibition, is that correct? Then doesn't that make you more likely to have killed Heyman Lee? I mean, yeah, I guess, but, like, I didn't have any malicious intent. Like, I mean, yeah, I guess your inhibition does, like, reduce when you're high, but, you know, like, all we did was, like, prank call friends and, like, go for a swim. Do you have any proof that that was all you did? No. Oh. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Sayed, you may step down. Bend over, you may call up your next witness. Um, a Max E. Pad? I would like to call a psychologist Dr. Max E. Pad to the stand. Dr. Max E. Pad, can you please introduce yourself and give us a quick evaluation of your psychological findings of these witnesses? Your Honor and members of the jury, my name is Dr. Max E. Pad from the American Psychological Association. I hold two degrees, both PhD, in clinical and forensic psychology. I'm here today to give my input on three individuals, Heyman Lee, Jay Wilde, and Anand Syed. I would like to start off with our victim, Heyman Lee. From the reports gathered, I figured that she had mild PTSD as she was sexually abused in Korea before coming to America. In America, she was suffering from her trauma. She was hypersexual, and also dated a man four years older than her at the time when she was 18. Next, I would like to move on to Anan Syed. I don't believe that Anan Syed is suffering from any mental disorders. He's just a regular teenager. Sure, he smoked marijuana, 
and that could lead to drug abuse and memory loss, but overall, his marijuana use was not maladaptive or distressing. He was also an emergency mechanical technician and had great grades, great athletics, and overall great friends. Next, I would like to move on to Jay Wilds. I do have some things to say about Jay Wilds. He, from what my reports say, is suffering from narcissistic personality disorder. I would like to say a quote. Jay told the police and the jury again and again that he was willing to lie in order to avoid criminal punishment. This is definitely stated in his contradicting testimonies. He would say one thing and then change his mind about it later. For instance, he said that Heyman Lee's body was buried at his grandmother's house and then later changed it to say that it was at Best Buy since he was doing drugs and selling and buying them at his grandmother's house. Drug abuse often leads to lowered inhibitions and also memory loss and confusion, as I've said before. This shows up in his contradicting testimonies, and out of, the, out of everyone that has been surveyed, I believe that he is the most guilty. Dr. Maxi Pride, you mentioned that regular use of smoking marijuana causes lower inhibition and memory loss. Is that correct? Yes, that is accurate. However, Wiles is making up testimonies that tied in far too accurately with other testimonies and there's no way they could have been made up based off of reconstructed memory. I have no more questions, Your Honor. Jack Daniels, do you have any questions for Max Epad? No. Moving on to the next witness, Mr. J. Wilds. Mr. Wilds, could you summarize uh, your version of the events that occurred that day? Sure. Adnan came to my house uh, around 1140 that morning, and he asked me if I bought a gift for my girlfriend at the time, and I realized I hadn't, so we were going to go to the mall. And then when he was there, he was talking about how mad at Hay he was because they broke up and like she left him for a white guy. Like, come on, you know? And um, when I dropped him back off at school, I had his car and so he left his phone and his keys with me. And it was around 12.30 and then um, we met up again and he had Hay's car and he pulled up the trunk at the Best Buy and I saw a dead body, man. And um, so we dropped his car off at a parking ride and then I went back to school because he had track practice and then we were hungry so we decided to get some food obviously and then we heard that hay was missing and so we went to my house and get some shovels and a pick and we went to Leakin Park to bury her and um, that's all that happened that night. Mr. Watts, did it not explicitly tell you that he murdered Heyman Lee? Uh, he said that they were going at it at the parking lot in the Best Buy, um, you know, like a normal person, and he killed her and shoved her body in her trunk of her car. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Wiles, this version of the story is quite different compared to the other ones that you have told. Why is that? I don't have photographic memory, idiot. Mr. Wiles, do you have any other empirical evidence other than the testimonies that you have said? Nah, bro, I don't. I, uh, I don't want to keep it low-key, because, you know, he murdered somebody. I'm done. I have no other further questions. Jack Daniels, please call the last witness to the stand. Jennifer Pusateri, please come to the stand. How are you involved in this case? Ah, so I helped Adnan and Jay bury Hay's body. I wiped their fingerprints off from the uh, shovels they used, and I threw away all of the other stuff, like the blood and stuff. Okay, so you two back up Mr. Rod's statements, yes? Yes, yes. I don't have any more questions, Your Honor. Miss Pusateri, if you were involved in covering the whole thing up, why didn't Jay Wilds mention you? He's an idiot. I was there. He's the only reason that a non in jail and not him. Miss Pusateri, isn't it weird that your story and Jay Wilds' story do not add up? How come? I don't know. That was like 20 years ago. That was such a long time ago. Do you know what you did yesterday? That is all, Your Honor. Okay, I am ruling that between the defense and the prosecution, there is not enough evidence to release Adnan Syed for the murder of Heyman Lee, and his appeal has been denied. Oh, wait, Your Honor, I bring another witness to the stand! Who in the flap nuggets? Here is Sandy Witch! Ben Dover says she would be here. Where is she? Monica, my name is Sandy Witch. I can help you! I will now bring back Heyman Lee. Uh, whoa, Hyman Lee! It was Jay Wilds and Jennifer Pusateri. They murdered me. I do agree with Hyman Lee, of course. The killer Jay Wilds is guilty, and he is a narcissist, as he was constantly switching up his stories 
and blaming others for the purpose of not getting in trouble. As an abuser of drugs for the purpose of money, Wiles did not want anything to get in the way. He may not have had a clear motive for murdering Havenly. However, he could have just done it for the sake of gaining attention. Wiles was driven to murder Lee to gain sympathy from others as someone who was forced by Sayed, the convicted murderer, to be a part of the crime. Additionally, Wiles probably knew that he could get away from the crime with his contradicting testimonies. If you have contradicting testimonies, you would be deemed unreliable and put out of the equation, and Wilde most likely knew this. This narcissism, the clever and genius way of getting out of trouble to maintain a clear state and to maximize attention, has put a nonsense behind bars. Jay Wilde is guilty of murdering Haven Lee. Additionally, Jennifer Pusateri is guilty for helping clean up the murder. Oh damn, I mean, I guess that solves it. Jay Wilds and Jennifer Pusateri, you're going to jail for the next 420 years. I mean, you gotta believe the dead, right? What do they gotta lie about? But, I have a question. Miss Lee, why couldn't you tell us this, like, two hours ago when we started? Wait, where did she go? Oh, Sandy, wait, is that you? No. Case closed.